Welcome to Yumi and Montessori. You are now on the channel of a Montessori broadcaster. We greet all our viewers with love, respect and peace. Thank you in advance for liking and subscribing. A special appreciation for our returning subscribers, and a huge thanks to new subscribers. In our previous video we showed how the so-called progressive educational establishment unleashed a full frontal attack against the Montessori method. The charge was led by Professor Kilpatrick. Our video also revealed how the Montessori method was vindicated by the test of time. In this video we shine a light on the immediate consequences of the attack on Montessorianism. We call it, the interregnum years. Grab your coffee, tea, or whatever is your fancy. Because now it is going to get interesting. From about 1918, U.S. news media made only scanty references to Montessori and the Montessori method. The maddening excitement had given way to despair. For about 40 years, no one took up the cudgels against Professor Kilpatrick's broadside. 1918-1960 can be seen as the interregnum years of the Montessori movement in the USA. In 1925, there were 1,000 Montessori schools in the U.S., this number fizzled out until only a few schools remained, as stated by Gudik. From the 1920s to the 1960s, the Montessori flame was kept burning in only a few Catholic Montessori schools. In 1953, a member of the Catholic Church, Nancy McCormick Rambusk, stepped up to the plate. She traveled to Paris to attend the Association Montessori Internationale, or AMI, 10th International Congress. She became friends with Mario Montessori, then the executive director of AMI. She took a Montessori teacher training course in London. Upon going back to the US, Rambusk energetically promoted the Montessori method to a by now more receptive audience. Her efforts led to the establishment of Whitby School in Greenwich in 1958. She also launched a teacher training program, and founded the American Montessori Society, or AMS. Yes, the phoenix shook itself, and started its inexorable rise. By the end of the 1950s, over 200 Montessori schools and several large teacher training centers were functioning, according to Gudik. The phoenix was by then, off the ground. The interregnum years reminds very much of the engrams that Montessori had written extensively about. This period was much more than a time of quiet. It was a period of gestation, one in which a nation digested the Montessori theories and experiences that they had shared before. It was a time for reflection and evaluation. It was a time of preparation for a new Montessori wave, one based on a deeper understanding of the profound Montessori principles. A wave that would prove to be unstoppable and poised to reinvigorate the Montessori movement across the world. And so, we have come to the end of the fifth video in our series on the history of the Montessori movement in the U.S. If you enjoyed it, please support our channel by subscribing and hitting the like button. Your opinions are important to us. So, let us know what you think of this video by passing us a comment if you wish. Look out for our next video in this popular series. And, thank you very much.